Uh, trade season, or at least free agency window, opens this Friday. A couple of days' time there, so that's all the free agents, the Jack Gunstons of the world. And then the trade period proper opens up uh, next Monday. Uh, Ty Power, number one on the trade table. Welcome to Fire. Any trade questions that you might have, any topics you think we need to discuss? Um, Toby Bedford's a, a player that we haven't spoken a lot of at uh, Melbourne, weighing up his options still. The Demons are confident that he is going to stay. He's out of contract and has had a stack of interest, it must be said. Um, to, again, a situation we see so many times. Does Toby want to stay and fight for his spot at Melbourne? Or does he want to go and be guaranteed regular football elsewhere? But, of course, the trade-off with that is you might not be a side in contention. I know the Giants are absolutely interested in a player like Toby Bedford. The uh, Giants are going to lose Bobby Hill, of course, to Collingwood. The Demons themselves have some, well, some interest in the fringe Suns forward Josh Corbett, who, geez, he set the VFL a lot at times this year, Josh Corbett. Uh, Melbourne say Sam Wiedemann he's happy to stay put and enter what is the final year of his contract at the moment in 2023. But just coming back to Corbett, he's met with... Fremantle and he's met with other clubs about a potential move there once regular football and a club who gives him I suppose the best chance of doing that I reckon he will move to so that's one to keep an eye on for Josh Corb we know the Dockers are going to lose Rory Lobb uh, going to lose Griffin Logue uh, Blake Akers Darcy Tucker uh, quite a uh, quite an exodus happening um, in the west Corbett would come for not much in a trade front you would have thought so uh, he has uh, it will spark some interest with his uh, performances in the second tier at times this season um, I'm mentioned, obviously, the Jack Bowes deal, which is one of the great fascinations of the trade period, given it's been pick, paired with pick number seven as uh, as the absolute sweetener. It's more than a sweetener. It's the not the icing on the cake. It is the cake. And uh, just about every club would be chasing that particular deal. I'm told Geelong and Essendon, the most likely there. Ollie Henry, you know, for all the links to Geelong, I just wonder how that trade actually will happen because Collingwood, they're going to want a handsome return for a player who was a first-round pick only a couple of years ago. Kicked 21 goals, 15, I reckon, this year from, from what was it, 16 games. Yes, he fell out of favour late in the season. But, gee, they're not going to just hand him over. And um, and can the Cats get it done on that front with everything else they've got going on as well? And they actually want to take a high pick into the draft as well. So while they've got some flexibility, 18, 36, 46, 51, another one in the 50s and the 60s, it goes on and on. Tanner Bruin, it seems like they're committed to. Ollie Henry on the periphery um, as well. There's Jack Bowes that they're in for. They've been pretty active, though, haven't they, for a premiership side, given they were into from a long time out Brody Grundy, priced out of that one, it would appear. Definitely priced out of the Jacob Hopper move as well. They are as good as anyone at this time of the year with um, with making the right decisions at the right time and under the right circumstances for them. If they get priced out, then so be it. They just move on to the next target. Uh, Jason Ball debuted in 92 but didn't play in the grand final with the Eagles that year. We'll keep this one coming. I'm going to get to the bottom of this one. Uh, Tire Power, Australia's biggest independent tire retailer, keeping you safe on the roads. You can find them online at tirepower.com.au. Any trade questions, happy to uh, to get to them over the course of the next hour or so. Uh, Sam, any word on Paddy Dow moving? Not at this point. Now, Paddy Dow's just going to have to be patient. It's one of those ones. He's contracted. He's obviously staying at Carlton unless he decides to pursue something else. Now, at last check, nothing concrete had come across his desk. If it does and the deal is right, then I think he'd be tempted. But at the moment, determined to fight for his spot at the Blues. One of those players, a bit like Will Setterfield, too good for the second tier. It's for a combination of reasons. Hasn't been able to make it work at the top level consistency. Consistently.